Hello, it's Jake, ba ba back again to once again rank the entire Charlie XDX discography from least to most enjoyed on my subjective opinion. I hope this goes without saying, but I expect for your rankings to differ greatly from mine. And on that same note, I would love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Please drop your favorite three, five, or hell, drop your favorite 10 Charlie XCX songs down below. However, since my first version of this video, Charlie has now released the album Brat, adding an additional 15 songs into her discography, as well as an additional three bonus tracks that came with the deluxe version of the album. In my prior video, I did not include deluxe tracks or singles, and that changes with this video. This video will include 120 songs from Charlie XCX's discography, so with that being said, let's just get right into this. Starting off at number 120, we have the song London Queen. And maybe it's because I'm a little bit of an Americuck, but the surf rock nature of this track is just utterly my kryptonite. Number 119, Red Balloon. I was originally going to have this song at the very bottom of my list, but after a couple repeat listens, there is something charming about this song that I can't quite put my finger on. Number 118, Die Tonight. Forever 21, Charlotte Ruse, and Urban Outfitters. These are all stores that would 100% have this song featured in their store playlist. And granted that it is probably a better song in the entirety of their playlist, I still don't really like this track. Number 117, So Over You. This is textbook pop music. This song features super clean production and super sappy pop lyrics, and I'm really not going to waste my time fighting against this one. It's fine. Number 116, Grins. Something about the slow buildup on this song is extremely off-putting for me. If you can get past that though, the song is actually quite unique with these creepy background vocals, an uplifting chorus, and rather dark lyrics for pop music at the time. Number 115, 15, so Far Away. Similar to the previous track mentioned, this song also features a rather long buildup for the introduction of the song. However, I feel like this song has a lot more to offer in the higher vocal delivery and some of the glistening synths featured in the intro and throughout the rest of the song as well. Number 114, Set Me Free. I generally like the buildup of this song with Charlie digging into some more lower toned vocal deliveries on the pre-chorus before escalating into a higher delivery on the actual chorus itself. Number 113, Breaking Up. My experience in the breakup territory is rather limited, but the song does kind of feel like a giant fuck you to an old acquaintance, so that's always really cool to see. Number 112, How Can I? Despite it being rather chilling, I actually find the comparison of a dead love to a graveyard to be rather unique, and the line about a cemetery chick going solo now is really creepy and a nice dark addition to the track. Number 111, Hanging Around. This song has a thumping rhythm very similar to We Will Rock You, as well as a ringing synth and a playful closing section. It's far from my favorite, but I can deal with it. Number 110, Lock You Up. I quite enjoy the instrumental to this track a lot, providing this almost floating through air feeling through its very uplifting synth melody. However, I do feel that at times the vocals get a bit buried in the mix of everything else going on on this song. Number 109, Stay Away. For the first 30 seconds of this song, I almost get vibes of Boom Clap Jr. But come the pre-chorus, the vibe completely changes. I also love the slick flows featured on the post-chorus of this song as well. Number 108, What You Think About Me. Given how much I love Crash the Album, it doesn't feel right having this song this low, even though it is just a deluxe track at the end of the day. Generally, I find this song to lack any significant depth, but I don't really think Charlie gives a fuck about what I have to say about this song, so fuck me. Number 107, Gold Coins. Let me tell you, when I first heard this song, I thought it was the worst song I was ever going to hear from Charlie. 
However, over time, I have warmed up to this song a lot, and the overly lavish atmosphere this song provides is honestly pretty impressive. The thing that really won me over, though, is that really freaky and funky synth line that is present throughout the entirety of this song. Number 106, What I Like. The little dance-flavored intro of this song is such a glimpse into the future of what Charlie was later going to go on to do with her music. Otherwise, it's just a typical mushy-gushy love song that is utterly dripping with Charlie's usual sense of natural charisma. Number 105, you're the one. The quiver on the word dark in this song really does win me over at the end of the day. And there is some genuinely very interesting production going on in this song with these roaring and very watery synths, as well as this subtle rewind effect that is present through the entirety of the track. Number 104, Famous. I find the disruptive lyrics in the chorus quite catchy, painting a nice scene of showing up to a party where you are uninvited, causing a very big commotion, ultimately falling down the stairs, and just pretending to live this lavish, famous lifestyle. Number 103, Body of My Own. In comparison to London Queen, I actually find the surf feel of this song to work entirely in its favor. I also appreciate the uplifting lyrical content, just feeling like a good moment to big yourself up a little bit. Number 102, Black Roses. Despite having positive things to say about pretty much every song below this one on the list, this is the first song that I enjoy through and through. The upbeat dance instrumental, the highs in the verses, or the actual presence of the breakdown on this track make this feel like a much more complete and expansive listening experience. Number 101, Sucker. The cinematic build on this song that ultimately leads to a flatlining cardiogram sound is honestly just very Charlie-esque. And I genuinely enjoy the rebellious nature of just saying, fuck you, sucker, all over the choruses. Number 100, Need Your Love. When I first heard this song, I could not fight the feeling that it sounded very similar to another song that I've heard, but I could not pin what it was. After a little bit more research though, I found out the song I was referring to was the song Electric Love by the group Borns, which funnily enough, these songs were both released within the same year. With that being said, there are many mashups of these songs, and I urge you to go check them out because they fit so perfectly. Number 99, You. The vocal chops on this song are just pure cocaine going directly into my eardrums. Euphoria overload. Number 98, Break the Rules. At this point, I am convinced this is just a me thing, but I still hear similarities in this track to Outside by Ellie Golding. With that being said though, I still would take this track any day of the week. Number 97, No Angel. The production on this track is certainly my favorite element, especially once you get into these choruses where you have these whooshing and watery sounding squeaks in the background of the track. Number 96, Caught in the Middle. The slick little flow that Charlie gets into on the chorus of this song complements the funkier production really well and provides a very easy song to dance along with. Number 95, Cloud Aura. Brooke Candy's verse may not be perfect in my eyes, but I cannot deny her ability to absolutely talk her shit. On the other hand, Charlie also dips into some very interesting pockets on her verses and has a fun melody that she catches on the chorus of this song. Number 94, Doing It. This track is funky as shit, the groove is utterly infectious, and Rita absolutely matches the energy that Charlie is putting forth on this song. What's not to love about this track, really? Number 93, Secret. Sophie's dark and gritty production on this track matches really well with Charlie's more sultry infused lyrical content. There is also a noticeable amount of sass that Charlie infuses her verses with on this song as well. Number 92, Delicious. Honestly, I don't have that many positive things to say about this track, but I really don't have any negatives to say about it as well. Just sort of middle of the road when it comes to her greater discography. Number 91, Sorry If I Hurt You. Once again, Charlie dips into a nice pocket on the bridge of this song, and fun fact, this was actually going to be the title of the album Crash prior to that album releasing. However, it ultimately ended up getting pushed onto the deluxe version of the album. Number 90, Dreamer. This song does a 
a great job of painting a nice atmosphere for itself, and it sets a real good tone at the start of the mixtape, Number One Angel. This whole track is over the top and super braggadocious, but in the best way possible. Number 89, Roll With Me. Charlie doesn't make club music. Shut up. Y yes, she does. Yes, she fucking does. And she's been doing it for a long while. Number 88. How can I not know what I need right now? I feel like this deluxe track actually does a great job at rehashing a lot of the themes off of the album Crash. And Charlie has this super fun and playful delivery on the song, despite it covering some very dark territory in the lyrical matter. Number 87, Blame It On You. Blame It On You is a rather progressive track when compared to everything else off of Number One Angel. Infused with sensual lyrical content, this track really rides out its slower pacing, but picks things up and adds a bit more of a punch in the chorus of the song. This is all preluding to a heftier dance section in the final quarter of the track, and I find the payoff to be absolutely worth it. Number 86, Girls Night Out. I'm not 100% sure that I'm allowed to be here, but I'm having a hell of a good time while I'm here. I'm really glad that some of the leaks of XCX World eventually got to see the light of day, however, it is a damn shame that the album leaked in the first place. Number 85, Boom Clap. This is either going to make a lot of people really happy having this song this high on the list, or it's going to make a lot of you very mad that I only have it this low on the list. Me, I think it's perfect right where it is. Number 84, Super Love. Again, another really groovy song that even features the nice little double claps that I love so much. The chorus is also super earwormy and I kind of find this song to just be a little bit of a hidden gem that may have been forgotten about a little too early. Number 83, Take My Hand. Underrated party banger from earlier in Charlie's discography. I especially love the melody of the bells featured in the refrain of this track. Number 82, Fembot. My favorite part of Fembot is right after Mickey Blanco's verse when Dorian Electra comes back around to repurpose a lot of the chorus of this song before the track utterly breaks down for a brief moment. Number 81, After the After Party. What? This song is fun. I don't give a fuck. Number 80, Shake It. Just looking at the feature list of this song, you have a super charismatic and powerful lineup. Big Frida, Cupcake, Pablo Vitar, and Brooke Candy, and of course, ending it all off, you have Charlie tying everything together. What I really appreciate about this song is that Charlie actually takes a bit of a backseat on this song and just lets her friends shine for the moment. Number 79, Detonate. Don't get me wrong, I still certainly love this song a lot. However, I do feel that with a title like Detonate, it feels a bit underwhelming, especially when you compare it to the closing track, Visions, off of How I'm Feeling Now. Number 78. February 2017. I see a rather heavy amount of dislike for the more island and dancehall inspired songs off of Charlie's self-titled album, and I'm not honestly too sure why. I find the echoing vocals in the background to actually be a very great touch, and I like that this song progresses into a almost futuristic dance-inspired track by the end of the song. I swear this wasn't intentional. Number 77. Seven Years. I find the instrumental on this track to actually work really well hand in hand with the lyrical content, almost providing this butterflies in your stomach like feeling with its pounding synths. Number 76, Thoughts. The way that this song almost feels like more of an inner monologue or a free flowing expression of one's inner thoughts really matches well with the sparse production all over this track. Number 75, Nuclear Seasons. On my first listen of True Romance, I really thought that I was going to love every single track on this project with the way that this song kind of starts super slow, but it eventually progresses into this very dance-inspired track. My favorite little elements on this song are the OO vocals that kind of pan around in your ears, as well as the whip crack featured on the chorus of the song. Number 74, Spring Breakers. Look, 
I'm still waiting for this song to warm up on me a bit more. I'll be honest, I've been listening to Brat almost non-stop, but when I do go to listen to the album, I am typically going to the standard 15 track version and not the deluxe version of the album. I do love that the angels love this song though. Number 73, I Love You Too. I really love the mushy, gushy, and lovey-dovey nature of this track, and that electric synth tar solo towards the back end is a unexpected yet very well welcomed addition to an already great track. Number 72, Blame It On Your Love. Uh, track 10 is bet. Number 71, Guess. This song is a downright nasty banger that provides just enough information for you to speculate on what Charlie is hinting towards without completely giving the surprise away. Number 70, Hello Goodbye. I know I'm a bit of a minority here probably, but this is my favorite of the three Brat Deluxe tracks. There is a certain retro feeling to this song, especially when you take a look at the synths in the background of the song that really just sends it home for me. Number 69, I Don't Wanna Know. I love I love the way that this song tackles feelings of questioning a lover's decisions and words to you, ultimately facing a realization that you don't want to know not for a specific reason, but because you already know the answer. Number 68, Boys. I didn't realize it while I was at the show, but we got robbed in Chicago. Not only did we not get Girl So Confusing, but we also missed out on Charlie playing Boys. What a fucking shame. Number 67, out of my head. Hands down, favorite aspect of this song is the post-chorus delivered by Tovlo. Number 66, Every Rule. Uh-oh. First entry of Crash This High, and you already know what's about to happen. You are looking at a certified Crash sympathizer. Do with that what you will. Every rule really does have kind of a gross feel in some of the lyrical content, but I find that to be more reflective of the fact that sometimes life and relationships can just get downright nasty. Number 65, Speed Drive. This is a song that had to grow on me a little bit with time, but I cannot deny the downright high speed and full of energy nature of this track. Plus, it honestly matches the Brat era perfectly. Oftentimes, I find songs that artists make for movies or TV shows to be really hard to recontextualize within their greater discography as a whole, but I think Charlie did a great job on this song, making it feel like a song that is also very unique to her and very much her own. Number 64, 3 AM. I have a soft spot for Charlie taking her stab at dance hall because I feel like she does a good enough job at putting her own unique spin on things. The production on this song also helps this track stand out just that little bit more. Number 63, Focus. Achievement Unlock. Make a good song titled Focus Challenge Level Impossible. Number 62, Flick. I always really enjoyed the high and over the top nature of this song, but I do feel that Tommy Cash lessens a bit of that impact for me on this song. I will say though, I have come around to this song a lot, especially with Tommy saying the line, I don't really give a fuck, really kind of encapsulating that energy and high confidence in what they are saying on this song. Number 61. Move Me. Overall, a shorter and sweeter song that trades some of that in-your-face production for a more laid-back delivery and straight-to-the-heart lyrics. I find this track to serve a very similar purpose to some of the slower-paced ballads off of the self-titled, of course, though, in a very different context. Number 60, Five in the Morning. There is a certain energy to this song that just makes it feel like you are listening to it in this dark city alleyway. Charlie's delivery also matches this energy perfectly and I like some of the higher tones she hits on the back end of this track as well. Number 59. I might say something stupid. I know what you're thinking. How can this song be this high up? And it's simple. The abrupt cut at the end of the song is everything to me. Number 58, Tears. The scream that Caroline holds at the end of this song is utterly magic to the ears and it reminds me of the clip of her screaming at geese at a public park.
Number 57, Forever. I adore the way that this song starts off with these very rough tire screech sounds, especially considering it is following up the high energy and impactful track, Pink Diamond. Outside of that, I just find this song very easy to relate to and pretty damn catchy at the end of the day. Number 56, White Roses. White Roses is super sleek and very sensual, especially once you get into the chorus sections of this song. I already don't see the mixtape number one angel getting enough love, but this track itself is particularly something very special. Number 55, Selfish Girl. This is my favorite deluxe track off the Crash album because at the end of the day, who doesn't feel like a little bit of a selfish girl at times? Number 54, Mean Girls. On my first listen of Brad, I was certainly convinced that this song was going to remain in my top five off that album for a very long time. However, as things have progressed, I find myself revisiting the album more and more, and this track isn't lessening in enjoyment, but every other song off the project has only moved up in my eyes. The one thing that does get me though every time I listen to the song is that very crazy piano inclusion about halfway through the track. Number 53, Club Classics. This track is a love letter to club culture, partying, and just honestly having a good fucking time. And I really appreciate, again, all the name drops that Charlie features on this song, just really highlighting all the people she likes to collaborate so close with. Number 52, Enemy. This song covers some deeply personal territory, going over the feelings that you have when a lover who you trust so much has the ability to not only make you feel so good, but also hurt you terribly if anything were to happen to your relationship. Number 51, Cross You Out. I really appreciate the way that Charlie utilizes her voice as an instrument on this song, especially when alongside this deeper sub bass that allows for a certain degree of space for Charlie and Sky's vocals to just cut through perfectly. I really appreciate the way that Charlie utilizes her voice more as an instrument on this song, and the deeper sub bass on this track provides a very smothering, almost hug-like embrace that Charlie and Sky are able to cut right through. Number 50, Porsche. Stop letting Charlie just make songs about cars. They are too damn good. Number 49, Backseat. Speaking of cars, now we're in the backseat and we're getting mushy gushy. Charlie and Carly is a pairing that the world needs more of and I am just crossing my fingers that this Brat Remix album that everybody is hyping up proves to be a real thing at the end of the day. Number 48, Trophy. This track might just be the most Sophie influenced production on the Vroom Vroom EP and Charlie does a great job of matching the high energy and pounding nature of the instrumental that Sophie has laid down for her. Number 47, Talk Talk. I get the exact same feelings that I previously said about the track Die Tonight on this song, with this song almost being guaranteed to be featured on Forever 21's store playlist, but it is cute because it's about George. Number 46, New Shapes. This song is truly great, featuring three exceptional pop vocalists all getting their chance to shine over this really great synth pop banger. I love that Charlie and Christine mainly occupy the verses leaving the bridge entirely up to Caroline to take us to an entirely different dimension. Number 45, Claws. If it wasn't for this song being extremely surface level, I'm not honestly sure that I would love this song as much as I do. I feel like the lack of depth in some of the lyrical content actually aids to the mushy nature of this song, kind of just feeling like you are pouring out your heart on the track without really feeling that fear of judgment from being sappy. Number 44, Emotional. As a Cancer, I'm gonna defend this song as hard as I need to. Emotional boys, stand up. Number 43, Bond Dutch. This song does an excellent job of shutting all the haters right up. Quite literally, it is obvious. Charlie is your number one, setting the blueprint for much of pop music to follow for the next years. Not only setting a blueprint for future artists, but also pushing the boundaries of what can be considered 
pop music. Number 42, Party For You. Drawing parallels from The Great Gatsby, this song really encapsulates that feeling of dedicating every last bit of energy you have to someone you care so deeply for. It also has moments of deeper sincerity where those feelings that you project are not always reciprocated. Number 41, Drugs. I'll be honest, I am not going to sit here and pretend that the metaphor of comparing your love for someone to a love for drugs is anything deep. However, it is fun to listen to and it is absolutely grimy in the way it executes its vision. Number 40, Beg For You. On this track, Charlie is really showing a deeper appreciation for some of her roots, interpolating September's 2006 track, Cry For You, and she absolutely nails it alongside Marina Sawayama. Number 39, Anthems. During a time of lockdown and quarantine, this song is a great reflection of the desire to not be trapped inside anymore. With Charlie pinning down her exact feelings to the desire to go out to the club and hear the anthems she is so much longing for. Number 38, Weiss. The thing that absolutely sells me on this song is the juxtaposition of very dark lyrical content alongside a, well, Rugrats ass instrumental. Charlie is not shy for being very direct with her emotions, hitting with the line when it's too too much, there is a gun to my head. Number 37. 360. Bumping that, bumping that, bumping that, bumping that. In all seriousness, this is a perfect way to start off the album Brat, as well as being a great way to introduce the album in the form of a single. If you need any line to focus on on this song, it would be the line, if you love it, if you hate it, I don't fucking care what you think. I find this line to strike even harder following the release of the album Brat, with a lot of people being very dismissive of Charlie's success and not understanding the claim of this album. Number 36, 365. Honestly, the intro track and this song could essentially be interchangeable for me. However, I find this a great way to end the album off and it provides a great opportunity to loop the album right back into itself. Number 35, I think about it all the time. If you consider this track to be a low point on Brat, I very strongly urge you to reconsider your evaluation of this song. This track is actually one of the more deeply personal tracks in Charlie's entire catalog, reflecting on her place in life, her career, and her prospects of potentially wanting to become a mother. I said this as well in my review for the album Brat, but as a fan of Charlie's work, I would not only understand if she tried to put her career on hold or indefinitely put it on a hiatus to pursue these interests. And not only would I understand it, but I would only support the decision. At the end of the day, Charlie has nothing to prove to us or anybody for that matter. Number 34, Lucky. I said this before, but I really appreciate when Charlie utilizes her voice as more of an instrument on her songs. And that is certainly the case with this song as well. On this track, Charlie hits notes that really shouldn't be possible because at the end of the day, they aren't possible. But that makes me like this song even more. Number 33, Unlock It. This is one of Charlie's more iconic tracks for sure, whether it be the critical reception of this track on release, the future TikTok appreciation of this track, or the power this track carries when performed during live settings. This track is able to get people, regardless of their orientation, to simply throw their hands up and swing them side to side like there is not a single care in the freaking world. Number 32, I Got It. This instrumental is absolutely nuts. If you have not gotten the opportunity to listen to this track with the vocals removed from it, I strongly urge you to do so. The breakdown at the end of this track is absolutely everything. Number 31, Girl So Confusing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'm extremely confused. You're confused. I'm fucking confused, bro. Number 30, Pink Diamond. Similar to my reflection over the track Anthems, this song encapsulates that desire to just go hard. This is a perfect intro for the album How I'm Feeling Now. Number 29, Good Ones. My favorite element of this track is the fluctuation in Charlie's vocals when she delivers the line, go. 
Number 28, warm. If you haven't picked up on it yet, I honestly don't know what to tell you, but I am a sucker for when Charlie goes for these more island inspired dance hall tracks. Add on to that the fact that Haim does a wonderful job of adding their own unique spin to the feel of this track as well, and it is a certified banger. Number 27, constant repeat. I especially love the way that this instrumental almost recurs all over itself, providing this very cyclical nature to the beat for this song. Number 26, back to back. I have just recently come into the discovery that Charlie is actually not saying building myself up and breaking myself down on the chorus of this song. However, that really doesn't change anything for my enjoyment of this track, really just being a very inspirational track covering the cycle of becoming a better version of yourself. Number 25, Crash. Crash Detractors. I need to have a word with you. How did you play this song and not fall in love with it? Asking for a friend. Number 24, Next Level Charlie. If not for anything else, Charlie does a exceptional job at starting off her projects on an extremely high note, and this song is no different. Number 23, Paradise. I could certainly understand where this would maybe not be someone's favorite tune from Charlie. However, I get a lot of nostalgia from this song for early internet hits, especially the likes of Caramel Dancing. Number 22 official. The way that the instrumental doesn't really detract from any of the vocal delivery on this song is great, really giving Charlie the opportunity to just kind of gob over some of these honeymoon-like feelings in a relationship. Number 21, Rewind. Another track from Brat that is certainly very high energy, but also very deeply personal to Charlie as a person. On this track, Charlie is not only reflecting on where she is currently at in her life, but some of the simpler times where things were simply not overanalyzed, whether it be by her or the people around her. The thing that pushes the song over the top for me, though, is the fun little rewind sound effects that are featured throughout the entirety of this song. Number 20, Baby Girl. I actually really love the way that the cowbell is utilized on this song, and Yuffie's delivery is attention grabbing and very demanding of your ear. Number 19, Lip Gloss. Speaking of demanding attention, that is exactly what Cupcake does on this song. Again, I could understand where this song might not be someone's preference. However, if you believe that this song for some reason should not exist, I urge you to really reevaluate evaluate your decision on that matter. If men are openly able to objectify women all they want over a song, then I don't see any reason why Cupcake should not be able to deliver her side of things and really just provide this braggadocious and heavily sexual energy to the song as well. Number 18, I finally understand. I really relate with the line on this song, my therapist says I hate myself really bad, serving as a bit of a waking up moment with the realization that you need to make changes in your life for a more fulfilling and happy life in the long term. Number 17, 2099. 2099 has this quite gripping embrace with this all surrounding and blaringly loud instrumental. I also really like the way that Charlie's vocals pan from both ears on the first chorus of this song. This track aesthetically feels like hopping in a time machine and flying 2000 years into the future. Number 16. Visions. As I mentioned before, Visions feels like a much more complete version of Detonate, really leaning into some of that chaotic nature and devolving into an all-out mess by the end of the song in the best way possible. Number 15, Baby. Charlie really channels her inner bad bitch on this song, and she makes it blatantly clear that if you are not careful, she is going to fuck you up. Number 14, Everything is romantic. This track feels very unique within Charlie XCX's larger discography, going for a much more UK drill inspired approach before transitioning into that same club feel that you were getting on the rest of Brat. The vocoder effect at the end of the song is also a really nice touch before leading out of the song with this more environmental ending, feeling like you're kind of walking out of the club and you can feel the bass slowly getting quieter behind you. Number 13, 
Yuck. This song feels so much like a traditional pop song while also juggling a feel of being anti-pop. Instead, refuting all the typical pop tropes when it comes to making a lovey-dovey song. These cute moments I'm referring to are instead rejected by Charlie, exclaiming that no, the butterflies in the stomach you are feeling are just simply yuck. Number 12, 1999. With every year that goes by in my life, this song only feels more and more potent. The whole aesthetic of this song feels much less of a remember the 90s pandering think piece and more a reflection of simply the things that Charlie appreciated from those times. Number 11, Click 2.0. I don't know why we needed an improved version of the song Click, but yet here it is. I especially love the first verse of this track and the way that Charlie comes in with this almost cheerleader-like energy to her delivery. Number 10, Used to Know Me. I found this song and crashed the album at honestly the perfect moment in my life. I was certainly struggling with feelings of inadequacy, whether it be in myself, my career, or the way that people around me view me. And this track instead feels like a rejection of all of those feelings, throwing them right back into people's faces. Lastly, I also really love how this song kind of feels like a bit of a dig at Charlie's recording label. Number 9, White Mercedes. Again, stop letting Charlie make songs about cars. They are too damn good. The deeper territory that this track goes into, again covering feelings of inadequacy, cut deep once again. Are you beginning to notice a trend here? Number 8, So I. I can certainly understand where this might be a hard track for people to revisit, but I think the way that Charlie executes her vision with this song is perfect and she absolutely nailed the landing. Serving as a dedication piece and also a love letter to the late artist Sophie, Charlie covers not only how great of a person Sophie was for her, but also dabbles in territory of moments where she was not the best friend in return. You really don't see a lot of dedication pieces taking a approach similar to this where they highlight some of their own flaws as a person in the relationship. With that being said though, I don't think the song only serves as a dedication piece because I also think it can be heavily applied to your own lives as well. Think about it. There has got to be at least one person in your life that has been a similar force for you in the same way that Sophie was for Charlie. Always pushing you to be better than you were the day before. And I'm gonna be honest, when that person is gone, it fucking hurts. But on that same note, there is also a really great interpolation of Sophie's song, It's Okay to Cry, which is just a great reminder that you don't have to be strong all the time. The last little element I would like to highlight is when Charlie dips into a little bit more of her inner monologue on this song, reflecting on, would Sophie even like this track, stating, maybe just a little bit. Number seven, Vroom Vroom, one word, I Iconic. Number six, Sympathy is a Knife. In a similar vein to Twice off the album Crash, I like the way that Charlie is very much not concerned with how people are going to receive her content on this track. It is deeply personal to a degree of putting everything out there on the line while still also questioning why all these rushing emotions are present in the first place. At the sake of not getting mobbed by a certain grouping of fans, yes, this song is directed towards somebody, but this is not a diss song. All this song does is highlight Charlie's insecurity. If you think it is more than that, it says a lot more about you than it does about her. Number five, Silver Cross. I am just going to gob over the song for a second. Please forgive me. The clacks in the background of the song, the soothing yet high-pitched synths, the higher-pitched delivery, the uplifting energy and the utter brain massage as you transition from the chorus to verse are exactly all the reasons why this song is so high up here. Number four, lightning. Okay, but in all seriousness, 
I love the playful nature of this song between the vocal effects, the dance break in the middle, or the crashing thunder that is featured on this track. I really don't know what Melon was smoking on with this one. Number three, Apple. I feel like I again might be in the minority of people who have this track as their favorite off Brat, and honestly, that wasn't always the case. However, upon many repeat listens of this album, I have developed a very deep appreciation for this track. The running metaphor of comparing one's relationship with their parents to an apple is utterly masterclass, and I will explain why. If you are not aware, this track is comp comparing that relationship to an apple because apples share a lot of similarities between us and them, with us both being heterozygous creatures. What does that mean? All that really means is that we share 50% of our traits from our mother, 50% of our traits from our father. This is very reflective of how as you grow as an individual, you will find aspects of your parents' personality, their physical appearance, bleeding into yourself, but that desire to be your own unique individual does not go away. This is displayed in the end of the choruses where Charlie describes wanting to run away to the airport when she gets too overwhelmed by these rushing emotions. The real name of the game here is picking the positive qualities that you want to emulate in yourself and discarding all of the negative qualities that you do not want to see yourself emulating. Again. I cannot begin to express how much this song has grown on me. No pun intended. Number two, Gone. If there is any song I could play for a person who is not familiar with Charlie's work, this would be my go-to. This song is a certain degree of approachable while still remaining distinct enough to not quite sound like anything I have ever heard in the past. The instrumental is loud and full of life, but Charlie and Christine are powerful enough vocalists to cut right through everything. Similar to my feelings on New Shapes, I like that this song provides a moment for both vocalists to shine, but then they also eventually come back together to crush the track as a combined unit. Lastly, I love the dance break of this track as well, with these stuttered vocals leading into the outro and Christine providing these almost underwater sounding vocals. It's absolute perfection. And to and everything off, nothing has changed here. My number one Charlie XCX song is track 10. Given that I just said Gone was perfection, it leaves me a little bit with a lack of words of how to describe this song. Track 10 is not only progressive or experimental or super affectionate, but it is a track that I feel only Charlie herself could pull off as well as it was. This track takes time to build, starting off slower and eventually leaning into more endearing territory. And all of this is before the energy in the song ramps up and starts branching out all over the place. And once again, Charlie really leans into the auto-tune effect on her vocals using her voice as an instrument on this song, which you should know by now, I love a lot. But simultaneously, she takes this track places that you simply will not find on the other version, Blame It On Your Love. By the end of this track, everything is breaking down and distorting all around you. To end off my comments on this track, this track is emotional progressive, but yet still provides enough grit to keep things more than entertaining throughout the entirety of the track. I really don't see this song going anywhere in my grand ranking of Charlie's discography anytime soon. Okay, that has been ranking the Charlie XCX discography brat edition. I certainly hope I didn't rustle too many jimmies with my rankings, but again, as I said at the beginning of the video, if your picks differ from mine, please let me know down below in the comments. This video has certainly been a long time in the making, and I put a lot of work into getting this one done, especially when it comes to actually typing up some of my thoughts on these tracks. Every single song here I really listen to in its entirety, if not once, but more than likely multiple times. So I will let you speculate 
how long it took me to get the script together. If you would like to see more videos in this style or any kind of different content, I would love for you to let me know down below in the comments. And if you really like this video, take a chance to subscribe to see what I have coming in the future. With that being said though, I'm gonna get out of here. It's been Jake, Charlie XCX, love.